Question number 16, that's from thermodynamics and straightforward formula based. Let's see what is it. There are two processes. One is isothermal and other is adiabatic. Let me just show what it has to say. Initially the volume is V1. Isothermally the volume becomes 4V1. So it's an isothermal expansion. And after that adiabatically the volume has been made 32 times V1. So this is the isothermal okay, and this is the adiabatic and in both situations we need to calculate the ratio of work done. W iso by W adiabatic that is F natural log 2 and we got to calculate the value of F. Let us see. In the first situation what I will assume is if the temperature here is T, the temperature here would also be T straightforward isothermal and now you could see the temperature will decrease. It is an adiabatic expansion and if you calculate that, that will be T by 4. How come? For the adiabatic you can use T V gamma minus 1 and since it is monoatomic, so 5 by 3 minus of 1 will be constant. That will be the equation related to the adiabatic one. So you can easily do straightforward calculation. So work done isothermal is to work done adiabatic if I do. For isothermal it is N R T natural log final volume by initial volume divided by for the adiabatic how much it is going to be N R delta T. So that is going to be T by 4 minus of T divided by 1 minus gamma. So that will be 1 minus 5 by 3. So that is the work done in adiabatic. So it is a simple division there and when you do the division this value comes out to be you know 16 by 9 natural log 2 which is quite a simple calculation log 4 that will be 2 natural log 2 you can do that. So F is this the coefficient of natural log 2. So the value of F is 16 by 9 but since we need to truncate it till 2 digits after decimal so that is going to be 1.78. All right let us move to the next one. Question number 17 from sound wave and little bit of modification is there. There is a stationary tuning fork and it is in resonance with air column. Now that is a first situation. The second situation is that the same tuning fork is moved with a speed 2 meter per second in front of the open end and parallel to it. So let me take that the tuning fork is approaching the column. So in that case the frequency would increase. Now once the frequency received by the pipe would increase the condition of resonance will not happen. But the question wants the resonance to happen and for that you know we have to change the length of the air column. So we need to calculate the percentage change required in the length of the column so that in the second condition with the moving tuning fork still a resonance will be there. So what we will do is that all the given factors are there, the speed of the tuning fork is there, speed of sound has been given. Now let us try to understand. So in the first case let me assume F is the frequency of the tuning fork. Now if the tuning fork starts approaching let me call that as F dash and what will be the value of F dash? F because the source is moving so V minus of VT let me do that. So based on this let us see what is the percentage change in the frequency. So a little bit of calculation is required F dash by F I will bring it there and I will even subtract by 1. So this is going to be V by V minus of VT minus of 1 that is what it is going to be. And if you just realize here that is the F dash minus F by F is itself the fractional change in frequency and that will be equals to VT by V minus of VT and this can be easily calculated given the value of V and VT both. But then how can we relate 
it with the percentage change in the length. So, let us try to see the expression of tuning fork that f you know is inversely proportional to the length that is very clear because see when there is a resonance the f frequency of the tuning fork will be equals to frequency of the pipe and frequency is of course inversely proportional to L. So, that means we can write here further that delta f by f will be equals to let me write in terms of magnitude delta L by L. So, I am done here. I will put the value of delta f by f here that will give me delta L by L, but we had to calculate in percentage change. So, you multiply by 100 as well and that will be 0 0.63. Let us go to the next one, the final question. The final question is from electrostatics and Gauss law calculation of flux it is involved. So, primarily the question is not much difficult. Now, what does this say? There is a circular disc of radius r and that carries surface charge density this much and we need to calculate electric flux through two surfaces. Number one, through a large spherical surface that encloses the charge disc completely. So, that is very large, that is phi naught, the flux through that large sphere. And in the second case, we have another sphere, but of radius r by 4 and it is concentric, the center of the disc, the center of the sphere, they are concurrent. We need to calculate the ratio of the flux. So, what we will do is that let us take the help of a figure, I will just show how the flux can be calculated. So, this is the disc all right and what is the density of the disc? Let us try to see sigma naught 1 minus small r by capital R that is the surface charge density. First of all, you know let me calculate the flux through the larger sphere, a very large sphere. Now, just imagine there is a huge sphere which encloses the disc. So, how much will be the value of phi 0, the flux through that large sphere, the total charge enclosed? So, the total charge enclosed is going to be sigma into 2 pi r dr 0 capital R divided by epsilon naught, right. We go for the total charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught that will be the flux through that large sphere. But second case we have to calculate flux through a sphere whose radius is r by 4. That means essentially I need to calculate the charge on the disc up to the radius of r by 4 that is what I need to do. So, in the second case the value of phi is going to be sigma 2 pi r dr limit 0 to r by 4 divided by epsilon naught. So, here you go you calculate that the ratio that will be 6.4 and with this we end up the discussion for paper 1. So, for those students who had attempted, I wish all the best and the future aspirants who are watching this video, I am confident that this has really given you a valuable input and a new way to think and an approach for the examination. Thanks for joining me. I will see you in the paper 2.